Good morning, boys and girls. It is Monday, May 17th, and today we are going to be in your new homework pack. So please pick one up if you have not done so already. We are in section four, page 118. This should be labeled pink. And we are working on some difficult stuff here. We are working on word problems with decimals in them. All right. And I know some of us have trouble with word problems. That's okay. I'm going to work through these things with you. All right. Just remember uh, when you're dealing with word problems, step one read the problem and get all those uh, wonderful numbers out of the problem. Okay, just go through, get all the good information. Maybe you can underline it or write it down. Step two, draw yourself a picture. All right, making a model really helps. All right, step three should be try to solve your problem. Okay, what's, what's the missing information that you need to solve your problem? And then step four, should be checking your work to make sure everything makes sense. All right, kids. So uh, let's just look at this. It says, well done, Nadia. You managed to save part of your allowance every day. Allowance is like money that kids get for things like food or, you know, doing chores or things. All right. Um, and she does not know how much money she's saved. She says, my daily allowance is $3.50. How much did I save each day? All right. Well, hmm, let's check it out. Not sure if she makes $3.50 per day and she's got one, two, three, four, five days here. All right. I would say she should multiply this $3.50 by five, the number of days, and then subtract all these other amounts. We can add these up, all right? So we're going to be solving things like these. All right, just remember here, the four operations, meaning addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division can be used to solve word problems involving decimals, okay? So these are just like those other word problems we did, except now we got some little decimal points in there, all right? Um, so let's check out a couple examples. Here's one, it says, Gary ordered a meal that cost $8.95 and a dessert that cost $5.90. Explain how to find the amount Gary paid in total, all right? So if I was going through this, I would First off, I would just get all this information. I'm gonna underline $8.95, that seems relevant. Same with $5.90. And then uh, these other words here, explain how to find the amount Gary paid in total, okay? This means this and this, all right? And so this tells me I'm doing an addition problem, all right? Now, if you wanted to draw your uh, picture, maybe you could draw, oh, I don't know. We can use a bar graph, or maybe you could use a plate because you are using food here, okay? Here's one plate for the meal. Here's another plate, all right? Eight, 95, all right? And this is just a simple addition problem. 590, and then we want to add them together, okay? I like putting my stuff vertically, meaning up and down, and then I can line up all these digits. Now remember, boys and girls, when you are adding or subtracting decimals, please, please, please line up the decimal points. If you do not do that, you are going to get a wrong answer. All right. Five plus zero is five. Nine and nine is 18. Carry the one. Do not forget your decimal point. Um, eight and one is nine plus five is 14. All right, so that's just an example of a simple word problem. 
let's go through and check these examples and then we'll do a couple problems ourselves here. All right, a pail, that's like a bucket, a pail contained 2.75 liters of water, a tank, and this does not mean like an army tank, this just means like a giant thing of water here, a tank contained 1.26 liters more water than the pail. How much water was there in the tank? Okay, step number one, just go through, underline this, okay? 2.75 liters, and we have 1.26 liters more. This more is important, okay? And then our question here is asking, how much water was there in the tank? How do we figure this out? Okay, well, we know that we, we know the amount of water in the pail, all right? And then we know how much more water there is in the tank, okay? So they have drawn you a really nice model here. Um, here's our water in the bucket or the pail. And then we have uh, 1.26 because that's how much more water is in the tank. Now it seems I can figure this out, okay? This is just an addition problem. 2.75 plus 1.26 equals 4.01, okay? There was 4.01 liters of water in the tank. Let's continue. Example two. All right, Siti had $8.50. She spent 3.7, I'm sorry, $3.75 on a book. How much money did she have left? All right, so once again, go back, get all this information. All right, and I'm going to underline the word spent, okay? If you spend money, that means you no longer have that money. This tells me uh, I'm gonna end up with less money than I started with, less than this 850, which means uh, it's also, I'm gonna underline this. How much money did she have left, okay? This tells me, these are all things telling me this is a subtraction problem, okay? So here, once again, they have given you a really nice uh, model here or a diagram. We start with 850. Here's our 375, okay? And it looks as though we are doing subtraction. $8.50 minus 375, we're going to end up with $4.75. Example three. Julie used 4.25 meters of cloth cloth to make a dress. How much cloth did she use to make four such dresses? All right. Um, so we know that she used 4.25 meters to make one dress and she's trying to make four. All right. If we know the price of one, we want to figure out exactly four of the same type of thing, whatever it is, if it's dresses or candy bars or stuffed animals, all right? Um, this is just a simple multiplication problem. Here's our wonderful model, all right? This is one, and then we have four here in total. Um, we could add these up, but it's much easier and faster to multiply, okay? 4.25 times four, equals 17. All right, make sure you know how to multiply decimals. All right, it's the same thing. You can kind of just pretend that this decimal point is not there and just bring it down into your answer column, okay? She used 17 meters of cloth to make four such dresses. And lastly, problem number four, the length of a garden hose was 12.48 meters. David cut the hose equally into six pieces. All right. Um, then it says, what was the length of each piece? All right. I am underlining this word cut. All right. This means we're chopping it up into bits or dividing. And I'm also going to underline the word equally. This tells me I can divide it. Okay. And how much are we going to divide it by? Well, it seems like we're going to divide it into six 
equal pieces. And we want to know what was the length of each piece, meaning what's the length of one piece here, all right? So this tells all of these things tell me this is a division problem, all right? So here's our wonderful diagram, our model that they made for us. Uh, we know the whole total here is 12.48 meters. And we have chopped this into six pieces. How much is one piece? All right. And then we have written out our problem 12.48 divided by six should equal 2.08. Please don't forget your zero or your decimal point when you're dividing these things. All right. So the length of each piece should be 2.08 meters. All right. Um, we are going to skip this because it is not relevant at the moment, all right? Let's do a couple examples here. Mrs. Tan used 1.8 kilograms of flour and 2.45 kilograms of sugar to make a cake. How much flour and sugar did she use all together? All right, when you see words like all together and and, um, this tells me we are doing addition. Okay, so we know how much uh, flour she used. Here's my flour. I'm going to put it in this wonderful picture they made us. Put all the information, that way you can figure it out in your head. All right, and we also know how much sugar she used. That is a lot of sugar. All right, so how much did she use altogether? Well, I'm just going to add this up here, okay? Um, so I'm going to do 1.8 plus 2.45. How much is that? And this is a good example of something that might go wrong in this problem, okay? I'm going to line it up vertically. And I'm also going to show you what not to do first. Does this look okay to you? It does not to me. Why? Because these decimal points are not lined up. All right, make sure you know what you're doing here. My ones column matches with the ones column. My decimal points are in line with each other. My tenths place is in line with the other tenths place. And now here I have this extra five. What do I do with this extra five on the end here? All right, well, as I've said many times, 1.8 is the same as 1.80, okay? So you can pretend there's a zero there, or you can just drop the five down. Either way, you're gonna get five, okay? This is just an addition problem, so uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Eight plus four is 12. Carry the one. Please do not forget your decimal point. Bring it down right where it should go. One plus one plus two is four, okay? So we should end up with 4.25 kilograms. All right, and we should write that here. She used 4.25 kg of flowers and sugar all together. Um, I'm not going to because my writing is super messy on this computer. Let's just move on to problem number two here. The height of a rain tree, I'm not sure what a rain tree is. The height of a rain tree is 22.63 meters. A papaya tree, oh, I know what that is, is 13.85 meters shorter than the rain tree. What is the height of the papaya tree? All right, so we know the height of the rain tree, it is 22. 0.63, um, and we know that the papaya tree is 13.85 shorter, all right? The height of the papaya tree is not 13.85 meters. It is 13.85 shorter than 22.63. So what kind of problem are we doing? We are going to be doing a subtraction problem here. We are going to take our total which is the height 
of this rain tree. And then we're going to subtract 13.85 here. Oh man, this keeps getting messier and messier. I'm going to switch to this one. All right, so I have 22.63 minus 13.85. And what should our grand total be here? I'm gonna put my subtraction mark here. All right, this requires you to do some math, okay? Don't try and do this all in your head. You will get confused and come up with wrong answers. That's why they give you all this space. You should use it. Okay, 13 minus five is eight. All right, now I've got another one where I need to borrow. This becomes 15. 15 minus eight is seven. Do not forget your decimal point. Gotta borrow again. This becomes a one um, and this will become 11. All right, 11 minus three is eight. And then finally one minus one is zero. So um, the height of the rain tree, I'm sorry, the height of the papaya tree, this is our question mark here, which is our answer is 8.78. meters, all right? And once again, make sure you write it here. The height of the papaya tree is 8.78 meters. Number three, Bob travels at 6.17 kilometers from his home to his school. The distance from the school to the park is twice the distance from his home to the school. How far is the park from the school. All right, so um, let me go through and underline this information. We have 6.17 kilometers. All right, and then this is a super important word here. It says the distance from the school to the park is twice the distance from his school, from home to the school. Okay, so we know how much that is, and we know that this twice, meaning two times uh, the distance here. So what are we doing? This is a simple multiplication problem. We should have 6.17 times two, okay? Twice means two times. Hey, 6.17 times two, all right? So um, when you deal with multiplication, um, I actually, I put this two over here, even though it's in the ones column. Why am I doing that? Um, well, I'm just kind of pretending that this decimal point is not there. I'm going to add it back in at the end, or I can add it now, just so I don't confuse myself. All right. Then I just go about this as a normal multiplication problem. Seven times two is 14. Carry the one. One times two is two, plus one is three. And six times two is 12, all right? And make sure you check your work. Sorry, I'm going through this very fast, but here's a good example of maybe you're not sure about your math, okay? Just pretend if you estimate this, I don't know how much 6.17 times two is, but I know that six times two is 12. And our answer is, 12.34. Okay, so this seems reasonable to me. It seems logical. It makes sense. All right, so the park is 12.34 kilometers away from the school. And lastly, we are going to do Da, 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 da. We've already done addition. We did subtraction. We did multiplication. I'm pretty sure I can figure out what kind of problem this is. All right. Eight similar packets of chocolate cost $19.20. I'm going to underline that. I'm going to underline eight and this word similar. Okay. Then it says find the cost of one packet. 
All right, similar means the same basically. So this means they all look alike, okay? So we know how much the total is. And we know that there's eight of them that cost this total. And we know that all these are basically the same, okay? One's not twice the size of the other one. They put this word in there to make sure you are uh, chopping up this stuff equally, meaning we are dividing, okay? So your math problem should be 19, 20, 19 dollars, 20 cents divided by, uh, divided by eight. Okay, all right, and this is a good way to do division problems. I always find I have 19.20 divided by eight. I'm putting my decimal point here before I forget. All right, and then I'm gonna switch colors, why not? All right, eight does not fit into one because eight is smaller. So I'm then moving on to my next digit nine. Don't forget about your one there though. How many eights fit into 19? All right, eight times two is 16. That's about all we can do there. Subtract out, you get a remainder of three. Then bring down your next number. Once again, I'm just kind of pretending that this decimal point is not here, okay? It is in my answer place though. All right, how many eights fit into 32? Oh, this is going to work out perfectly. Four times eight is 32. Subtract out, you get zero. Are you finished? Not quite. We still have this extra decimal place here in the hundredths, okay? Bring it down. Eight goes in zero times. All right, we should end up with $2.40, okay? And this is important when you're dealing with money. When we're dealing with money, you want to have two decimal places always after the uh, decimal point there. Why? Because that's how we deal with money, okay? We divide it into little itty bitty things called cents. All right, that does it for these. Uh, we will go through these in class. I'm also going to be in your workbook which should be section five. If you want to try to attempt those word problems by yourself, go for it, all right? I'll help you out in class. Don't worry about it too much. That's on page 99, which should be the first page of section five. All right, kids, that's all for now. I'll see you in class at 10.30 and 1 p.m. sharp. Bye-bye.